This film is intended to show some details of the test sphere complex and to give some idea of how it is used for determining the response of aerosols of microorganisms to various conditions of humidity and temperature. There are two spheres housed in this building which is situated about one mile from the microbiological research establishment. This is a view of the spheres and the construction which will give some indication of their size. They are in fact about seven meters in diameter. We shall describe how one of them is used. Here is the sphere with the sounding arm attached and the liquid effluent receiver or hot well. Here the vent heater which sterilizes air drawn from the sphere and finally the sterilizers for liquid effluent. The air in the sphere is mixed by fans. A fan in the sampling arm draws air through the arm and back into the sphere. A vent heater fan to enable air to be drawn through the sphere or when the sphere is sealed by closing the air intake at the top to maintain a negative pressure throughout the system. Thus, The vent heater is now turned on. The aerosol disseminator is placed inside the sphere and the fans are started. The aerosol is disseminated and mixed with the air in the sphere. A negative pressure in the system is being maintained by the vent heater fan. The aerosol is circulated round the sampling arm ready for sampling. Samplers are attached and air samples withdrawn. This close-up shows the arm being scoured with clean air from the laboratory to remove the aerosol from the arm and thus allow safer removal of the samplers. The whole of the sphere is now scoured with air drawn in at the top. The extracted air is sterilized by passing through the vent heater. Any liquid effluent collects in the bottom of the receiver. The sphere is sealed and sterilized by passing in steam to maintain a temperature of 100 degrees. The sampling arm is also sterilized by this process. The liquid condense collected is pumped over into the sterilizing vessel where it is sterilized by steam under pressure before being discharged to field drains. We are now inside the sphere showing the entrance to the sampling arm. One of the mixing fans and the return of the sampling arm with the air circulating fan inside it. This is the pipe through which liquid effluent drains from the sphere to the receiver tank in the basement. This is the entry point of the sampling arm to the laboratory. We're now in the laboratory. The large valve is the main isolating valve to seal the arm from the sphere. Here we have the sampling face with ports for exposure of small animals and a butterfly valve on the return end of the arm which can be adjusted to vary the speed at which air is drawn through the arm three miles per hour is normally used. In the basement we have all the equipment for sterilizing air. Here we have the liquid effluent sterilizer, the vent heater for sterilizing air removed from the sphere, the hot well which collects any liquid from the sphere and the air burner which is used for sterilizing air removed from the laboratory. 
The amount of liquid collected in the hot well is small, except during the periods when the sphere is being sterilized. Air withdrawn from the sphere is sterilized by being passed through the electrically heated vent heater, which is controlled at a temperature of 350 degrees. We have returned to the sphere room, where steam is being applied to one of the space heaters to give us the desired temperature of the sphere. A wide range of temperatures can be obtained. Thermometers fitted into pockets in the sphere at various levels measure its temperature, which is recorded continuously in the basement. Air is removed from the laboratory to ventilate it and to maintain a pressure in the laboratory negative to atmospheric. This air is sterilized by being passed through the air burner, which operates at a flow rate of 2,000 cubic feet per minute and at a minimum temperature of 320 degrees. This is the group of people more intimately concerned with the experiment about to be made with an aerosol inside the sphere. They are donning the appropriate dress for the occasion. Those in white are going to the top of the sphere to install the aerosol disseminator through a safety cabinet attached to a port in the sphere. The sphere room is regarded as a clean area. Those who are entering the laboratory wear full protective clothing and don respirators before the aerosol is disseminated. The laboratory is reached through the autoclave room. Here the controller is checking that all services required for the experiment are available. He starts the air mixing fans in the sphere and the arm circulating fan. He also measures the temperature and humidity of the air in the system. He checks especially that the system is under a negative pressure. As a safety precaution, the main valve in the compressed air is closed while the aerosol disseminator is being lowered into the center of the sphere. The valve is opened and air supply to the disseminator is now under the control of the operator in the laboratory. It is possible to use many types of sampler to obtain air samples from the sampling arm. Here we see one of the simplest, the Porton impinger, being fitted to the exposure ports ready to remove air samples at chosen times during the period under investigation. Aerosols can be maintained in the sphere for at least 24 hours. Samples are obtained by applying a negative pressure to the samples for a given time and at a given flow rate. The number of viable microorganisms per litre of air will be determined from the subsequent assay of the number collected in the sample. The following operation will give some idea of the procedure adopted to remove a sample safely. Normally the sampling arm is sealed from the sphere. When a sample is required, the two valves which isolate the arm from the sphere are opened and the aerosol is drawn along the arm by the arm circulating fan. A measured air sample is removed. The sphere isolating valve closed and the arm and samplers flushed with clean air admitted from the laboratory through a filter and valve. Samples are transferred to bottles which are then sealed. They are disinfected on the outside and placed in the airlock 
in a transit box for safe transport to the assay laboratory. The number of samples taken here has in fact been reduced to a minimum to help make the operation clear. Animals are exposed to the aerosol to determine the minimum number of microorganisms required to be inhaled to cause infection. This is necessary because under certain conditions microorganisms can remain viable but lose their power to infect. Here we see how this is done using guinea pigs. Each port is fitted with a rubber diaphragm through which the guinea pig's nose projects into the sampling arm. Now we see how the team undress to leave the laboratory. This method has been adopted to minimize the hazard involved. The controller, who has not been directly involved with samples or animals, assists each member to undress. The person undressing does so in such a way that avoids contaminating the seat and himself. Since the laboratory is being ventilated by air drawn in through this doorway, there is quite a strong current of clean air passing through at this position. He enters the autoclave room, removes his inner suit and then takes a shower before replacing his normal clothes. Used clothing is boxed and subsequently autoclaved by an operator from the clean autoclave room side of the autoclave. Finally, before undressing himself, the controller makes the system safe for closing down by opening the breather valve in the sampling arm. Here is the assay laboratory to which the samples have been transported. The number of organisms in a given dilution of the samples is ascertained and from this number the number of organisms per litre of air in the sphere can be determined.